keeping up with fitness while studying biomedical engineering is kind of like juggling three different balls. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Gyms have had to power through this pandemic to give that in-person experience online. The University of Miami cheerleading team is flipping into competition mode. With the first ever ACC competition quickly approaching, the team is giving it all they have to make a name for themselves for years to come. Kids are dressed in costume from head to toe and cars decorated from hood to trunk as a way to get into the Halloween spirit. Plenty of students showed up to the HP event to grab an acai bowl and get their mandatory flu shot, including myself. quick and painless. I'm sitting in one of the pedicabs that they call fireflies. Each of these parade around the area and showcase the artwork to the city of Coral Gables. Although I wasn't able to go inside the facility because of COVID-19 restrictions, I was able to get a better understanding of the state-of-the-art technology that is making a world of difference in the team's training. Cassandra, what can you tell us? Thanks guys, Manny Diaz announced in a tweet today that he has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, we knew that this season was gonna be a tough one to get through because of the pandemic. Three games have already been postponed because of an outbreak amongst the team. This includes the games against Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Georgia Tech. In response to the recent outbreak, Miami has been doing socially distant conditioning in order to follow health and safety guidelines. For now, Diaz will be coaching remotely in preparation for the upcoming match against Wake Forest. To learn more about the status of the Hurricanes football team, we send it to Caroline McDonald and Josh White in the trenches. Guys. She joins us live now with more. Cassandra, what was the event like? Well, Sabrina, it was incredible, but the lights are out for Illuminate Coral Gables. This past weekend was the closing weekend of the outdoor art exhibit. But before the lights went out, I turned the spotlight on some of the people behind the event to learn how it all came together. As most pet owners know, every day is a celebration of their furry friends. But today is all about the puppies. Yes, those cute, irresistible balls of fluff. Thanks guys, welcome to this week's edition of Inside Pitch. I'm your host, Cassandra Garcia, alongside our analyst, Embrick Isles. Embrick, last week you predicted that Florida was going to sweep the series, but the Canes came out on top winning the final two games. So take us through some of the defining moments from last week. From tragedy to triumph, Garrison Red is no stranger to making the most out of a tough situation. If you've driven around the University of Miami, you might have seen what looks like a man who came straight out of the circus. Running miles at a time, he juggles his three trusty balls. The name is Kenny Goodrich, and he is just an ordinary guy doing not so ordinary things. I'm studying biomedical engineering. I come from a very quantitative and uh, logic heavy background. Goodrich juggles his health and wellness with his challenging coursework by squeezing in joggling runs every other day. Keeping up with fitness while studying biomedical engineering is kind of like juggling three different balls. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. I'll even uh, like have stuff that I have to memorize for a test and then I'll be saying it out loud while I'm running. And as much as this workout study routine is a stroke of genius, it came about as a stroke of luck. It started out as just a spontaneous thing. I just came across uh, three of my baseballs that I had and I just thought to myself, what if I just brought this with me to my run? I ended up falling in love with it. Today, the Miami Joggler has built a name for himself amongst University of Miami students. Who's that guy? Who's that? Seeing him is kind of like seeing Bigfoot. And like, I always call it my friend. I'm like, I saw a juggling guy. And sometimes he'll call me and be like, I saw a juggling guy. We always get so excited about it. What passerby see as their commute entertainment is really one man's workout. I mean, to me, it's just, I'm just going out there and running. You know, it's not, you know, that big of a thing to me. It's just another form of, you know, exercise. But the fans definitely don't go unnoticed. <laughs> I definitely like to just feed off of the energy of the people, you know, usually just their positive energy and support that just keeps me going. <laughs> For UMTV, I'm Cassandra Garcia. 
COVID-19 has been raising the stakes for businesses all across the country. People have adapted the way they do business to stay afloat. But this has presented an extra challenge for the gym industry. Gyms have had to power through this pandemic to give that in-person experience online. We pivoted everyone to online training, whether it was individualized workouts for the member or Zoom workouts. Fierce Fit Boot Camp in Miami, Florida has done exceptionally well despite the setbacks. We have a 95% retention rate of membership. But the biggest problem wasn't creating workouts. It was making sure people were staying on top of their nutrition. They came up with this really awesome idea to make sure that people were being held accountable throughout this time. Obviously staying home with the kitchen five feet away from you. <laughs> it's really, you know, a temptation to kind of be snacking all day. Fierce Fit has stayed relevant and kept their clients motivated by making fitness a friendly competition. For our members, we launched the quarantine games. It's a super fun online competition where they can their earning activities are things like joining in on a zoom workout posting their meal and tagging us or joining our weekly happy hour that's something that we've been doing over zoom the competition was so close that a month just didn't cut it we actually ex extended the quarantine games one more week because they're so neck and neck and like competitive about it Marino finished in second place, but she says it wasn't just about the competition. I just think it's always fun to kind of um, do something new and try something different and, and push your limits. This process has even revealed some blind spots that they plan to eliminate when things return to normal. We're planning for when we reopen, how we can incorporate regular accountability into their memberships because it's been something another game changer where like having someone there texting you in the morning hey here's your workout and in the evening checking back in with you asking you hey how'd it go oh you didn't get it done why is that fierce fit has shown clients that working out isn't just about getting fit but sometimes it's just about getting your mind off things for me it's been a really nice stress relief and almost therapeutic opportunity for umtv i'm cassandra garcia Thanks, Trey. COVID-19 has caused countless setbacks in sports this year. The UM rowing team had one more hurdle to add to that list, the Atlantic Ocean. I caught up with one student athlete who's chosen to study and train at home. Mary Lou Chardine is a senior and a fourth year member of the University of Miami rowing team. Coming into the school year, Chardine says she made the tough decision to go remote for the fall semester. Well, it was a really hard choice, actually. So at first I was really considering, you know, going back because of course I was missing my team and also I just wanted to be on campus. But after talking to her coach and learning that there would be several limitations for practice because of social distancing guidelines, Chardine opted to continue her training at home in France. A lot of the things are a little more accessible to her. And in, and in fact, some of the things that are available to her um, probably aren't available or would not be available here on campus or in the United States just yet. Chardine's decision to stay in France gives her the opportunity to do what she loves. We don't have the same, I guess, rules here. So I can still go in the water. So that allows me to row, actually, which is really, really nice. For now, Chardine's teammates, coach, and trainers keep in touch via Zoom as they look forward to reuniting for a strong season in the spring. I haven't seen Mary Lou or some of our other international teammates in almost half a year now, but we've all been making the best of it by supporting each other and staying diligent about keeping that energy we had during the spring season. Now here's the thing, new NCAA guidelines do not allow the rowing team to meet for practice. Coach Sanderson also cannot require them to do any sort of training. For now, he can only give them recommendations for types of training they can do on their own. Reporting for UMTV, I'm Cassandra Garcia. Back to you guys at the desk.